Hello and welcome to not the 100th monkey syndrome but this first installment of level zero extra where today I'll be showing a presentation on renewable energy by Desmond Bernardo who is a former reactor operator at Kuburg nuclear power station. But first just a reminder to subscribe to the new level zero channel here on YouTube but also much more importantly to subscribe to the level zero channel on Odyssey since that will become the main video platform for Level Zero where we can speak freely like grown-ups and not be censored. All episodes will also be uploaded to Odyssey first. So please head over to Odyssey and subscribe to Level Zero and you can also find our featured guest Desmond Bernardo on Odyssey under his channel Double O Des. The following footage was shot just over two years ago before Desmond and I really had our YouTube channels going and I asked Desmond to speak about renewable energy and why it is a bad idea on large grids like the national grid. In the context of this channel, the UN Agenda 21 drive to implement their vision of sustainable development relies heavily on countries replacing their traditional methods of power generation with wind and solar. Some of the most Welcome to Kitchen View. Yeah, as I previously explained, this now has to be done to protect certain audiences from the truth. You can find the grown-up, uncensored version on Odyssey. For many reasons, but the main reason being that it is not feasible to store all that energy and you kind of have to use it when it is available, which is very likely at a time when you won't be needing it, or lose it quite literally. We've got an industrial economy. We can't mine and smelt and bake bread with the lights on and the lights off, the lights on and the lights off. And unfortunately, that's what renewables gives you. Eskom has been forced by the government uh, to sign these uh, take or pay renewable agreements. And just to refresh your memory, Minister Khadebe signed 27 of those agreements on one day last year. So what does that, those agreements mean? It means that even at midnight, if Eskom has got low power requirements and it's adequately resourced, if there is renewable power, Eskom has to pay for it. Whether it can use it or not, it has to pay for it. Now, new, uh, renewables are only available at certain times of the day, like roughly 15% of the time. So, and it's not predictable when they're available, when the wind's going to blow, and where there's not a tide in front of the sun. For the sunlight, we know more or less between three and four hours a day that the power is at its peak and available. Uh, the issue is that even when the renewables are available, Eskom cannot switch off its cold plants. Because if the new world falls away because the wind drops, Eskom has to pick up that stack straight away. And that is what's killing Eskom. Because Eskom cannot get the money back from the consumer because there's no demand. It's not selling the electricity. So it sits on all this excess electricity and all it can do is dump it into the ground. How do they physically do that, just as an aside? So at Sinopan, they've got a control center where they've got massive discharge facilities to, to dump the electricity. Okay. This is not to say that there is no place for wind and solar power. They certainly have their uses and if you as an individual homeowner or business owner are able to afford putting up these systems to make yourself independent of the grid more power to you if very big if you are able to afford the appropriate battery storage facilities that are supposed to go with your system if you don't install the appropriate battery storage you're probably causing as many problems for the grid as we are allegedly trying to solve but that is a topic for another episode. We never released the following footage with Desmond because it wasn't really complete. We wanted to add to it and never got around to doing it. But that is a great reason to make another episode in future and maybe Desmond will even join us on the channel to discuss this issue of renewable energy further. I can just see that climate change is about to make a big time comeback in the news cycle and of course renewable energy is closely related to that. So without further delay, here is Desmond Bernardo on renewable energy. Good day, my name is Desmond Bernardo and I've been invited to speak to you about renewable energy. I've spent 20 plus years in the nuclear industry and I have worked with the various role players in the 
power generating industry over that period of time. I started my career in the industry at ESCOM Kuburg. After I completed my military service in the Air Force, I was immediately inducted into a nuclear cadet program, which was an experimental program where the nuclear industry wanted to generate nuclear professionals straight out of school and train us up uh, and qualify us to be licensed reactor operators. After completing the nuclear cadet program, I started out right at the bottom at Kuburg as an assistant nuclear plant operator that basically runs the outside plant. And from there I moved on to the nuclear auxiliary building where I had to be a radiation worker. From there I moved on to the turbine hall where you actually work uh, the turbine and all its auxiliary systems. After that, I moved on to become a senior nuclear plant operator where you actually work in a specialized control room that regulates the waste that comes from the nuclear power station. And after that, I went on a two-year sabbatical to actually write training material for uh, nuclear plant operators, following which I then entered the license course program after 10 years of normal plant operation to be trained over a three-year period to become a licensed reactor operator. During the two-year sabbatical, I actually spent time with a team that wrote training material and the unit standards specifically for the qualifications for all the different jobs in the energy sector. So people from uh, the paper pulp industry, people from uh, the metal industries that have the big smelters, Everyone that generated electricity, hydro, uh, gas turbines, uh, the coal-fired power stations, we all came together on a regular basis for an entire week and actually wrote what those jobs entail so that we could write the qualifications for the specific jobs and so that the people in the industry could get recognition for prior learning. What the did, this did for me was open up my mind to what actually happens at a coal-fired power station, what actually happens at Palmit at the hydro pump storage scheme, speaking to the people, uh, understanding their challenges and actually knowing what it's like to be there on shift to doing the work and making sure that the machine returns. The license course to become a reactor operator at Kuburg Nuclear Power Station is actually administered by the National Nuclear Regulator, which means that the entire nuclear industry is very well regulated. Something that doesn't happen in the same way with coal, with the gas turbines and with hydro. So, being in the nuclear industry has very specific requirements and for a nuclear power station to operate it has very specific license requirements. If those requirements are not met the power station will actually be shut down. So it's very important to understand that for people to get a license to operate a reactor like you would get a license to operate a jumbo jet and actually fly passengers all over the world is very much the same thing. We had to undergo stringent psychometric testing to make sure that we have the right personality, capabilities and abilities to actually perform the job. Something that would be nice for all people in politics. I mainly want to speak to you today about renewable energy and what renewable energy is and try and help you understand why the mainstream media misuses the term and why I want you to understand what renewable energy is and how we can actually use it properly. The reason why renewable energy is such a buzzword is because energy that is renewable will always be there in some way or form. Whereas an energy source such as natural gas or coal can be exhausted. And that has obviously made people very excited that we have this source that we could actually tap indefinitely. The first distinction I want to make is a distinction between using renewable energy on a small scale, which means that you use it either just at your business or at your house, and using renewable energy on a large scale, which means that that energy would be sent into a grid that is distributed nationwide in the case of South Africa, and where all the power gen generating sources would actually connect into that grid and supply that grid with electricity. The problem that we have on our national power grid with renewable energy is a simple one. 
our grid needs to be kept stable at all times so that all your electronic equipment in your house can work so that your computer and your laptop and everything else works optimally if that power grid is disrupted and the frequency on that grid drops then your equipment is not working optimally how ESCO maintains that power grid is by having coal-fired power stations that load follow and actually increase the load as we demand more and decrease the load as we demand less. The problem that renewables brings to the national grid is the fact that we cannot predict when they will supply power. So wind turbines will start up, they are placed in different areas all over the country and they will start up and start supplying into the grid and a coal-fired power station would actually have to start to reduce load if no extra load is required at that time. Which means that the coal-fired power station now has to change with an amount of up to 2000 megawatt which would correlate with the installed capacity for renewable energy to actually make up for the difference when the energy load is either being supplied or actually is removed like at night time when solar cannot supply anymore or when the wind drops down and the turbines can't supply into the grid so the national grid is actually under threat when the renewable energy factor in our grid or percentage is too high and the coal-fired power stations has to make up and adjust rapidly to those rapid changes where before they just had to adjust to when we come home and we switch on the air conditioner or we come home at night and we switch on the ovens those are predictable loads we cannot predict when wind is going to come in and go away we can predict the sun to a certain degree which makes it easier with solar but with wind it is a real nightmare for any grid when you have wind turbines coming in at will and you, your coal-fired power station or your load following station now has to ramp up and ramp down which obviously puts a lot of strain on the equipment as the equipment has to, to change, generate more, generate less to actually keep the grid stable. All baseload power stations like coal and nuclear wants to remain stable run at an optimum 100% power efficiency and renewable disrupts that status completely. In the case of baseload power stations, the power station generators tries to remain online for as long as possible without stopping unless they have to shut down for scheduled maintenance or for a breakdown. In other words, a fossil station, fossil fuel station like uh, any of the coal-fired power, power stations or a power station such as Kuburg are called base load stations. In other words, both of the Kuburg units supply just over 1800 megawatts onto the grid continuously. The only times those units would shut down is if the, the reactor would trip or the turbine would trip or if the units are shut down for routine maintenance. Very much the same with the coal-fired power stations. Those stations would only shut down if there's a fault somewhere that would automatically trip the, the generator or trip the boiler and then they would have to restart the process again. So on the South African power grid we have quite a unique situation because South Africa is vast and most of our coal-fired power stations are up north. We needed an anchor down in the Cape. So Kuburg was strategically built in Cape Town to be able to hold the grid up at the southern end of the country as well as some other smaller power stations distributed across South Africa. This is all to ensure grid stability. The moment renewable energy started or so-called renewable energy, energy started to generate onto the grid, what would happen is that 2000 megawatts would come onto the grid at will. It's not something that can be regulated. So when the wind started generating uh, power, it would supply onto the grid. There would be no control or regulation as with regards to when it supplies. On the South African national grid, at any point in time, there are numerous generators connected to that grid, uh, mainly from ESCOM and some from some of the IPPs. The big concern with grid control 
is that we need to ensure that the grid frequency remains at 50 Hz for the generators to remain operable. Generally, the coal-fired power stations, which are base load as well as load following, will have some of the units dedicated to actually increasing that, uh, the energy output to actually bring the frequency back up to 50 Hz and maintain the frequency there. Your alarm clock in your bedroom would actually change its time based on that 50 Hz frequency. So often on night shift, we'll be behind time and then we would actually catch up time into the morning hours so that by the time people wake up their alarm clocks are actually spot on time. So it's important to understand that the national grid which gets energy from large scale producers needs stable energy to maintain the 50 Hertz. If the grid frequency drops too low because of increased load and we cannot supply enough electricity there's a simple chain reaction that can happen that can literally black out the grid. Generators start tripping at a certain cutoff set point below 50 Hertz. You could have a regional blackout, you can have a national blackout if the grid fre frequency is in danger. So if a unit trips anywhere in the high felt for instance, and say it's a 600 megawatt unit which is quite large, that difference needs to be made up because the grid frequency will plummet immediately. So you either have to load it or you have to pick up the difference by using other power stations. The larger the grid, the more stable the grid becomes. So any disruption on the grid is bad for the grid. And this is where renewable energy sources add to the actual problems that we're experiencing with our grid today. When wind supplies energy onto the national grid, that would happen at any time when the wind would get the generator up to speed and to the point where it could actually start to load onto the grid. The National Control Center has no control over the wind turbines or any of the renewable resources and in fact, the coal-fired power stations have to make up the difference when the renewable energy drops off all of a sudden. So imagine you have 2000 megawatts onto the grid, including solar and wind. All of a sudden, all that wind is removed for whatever reason, and you go down to say 100 megawatts of the 2000 megawatts. You need to actually make up that difference with coal-fired power stations. That's all for this installment of Level Zero Extra. Thank you for watching, we'll pick up on this topic of renewable energy at a later time. Remember to head over to our new channels on Odyssey and YouTube and subscribe to stay up to date with all content from Level Zero.